This is where things get weird, and I wish people would pay more attention. HBO Max was never HBO. They should have called it Warner Plus. And this is why they changed the name to Max. They could, I, I think they should have called it Warner Plus. The, the, I've talked about this before, that Max might not be a great name, but it's a hell of a lot better than HBO Max, because as they themselves, the new owners from when Discovery later bought them, they pointed out, this is really confusing. People don't understand that we have children's content, that we also have Cartoon Network shows on this thing, and TNT and TBS shows. It's supposed to be the entire Time Warner corporate family. And by promoting it as HBO, it led to all sorts of problems, both in public perception and internally. So they needed to stop... Stre this was never HBO. This isn't just an outgrowth of the HBO Now streaming app for HBO, but for that entire thing, for DC Comics stuff, for that franchise of films and TV shows, just everything. And it really reflects that they just did not understand what this thing was supposed to be. So the old HBO was out, but then the first two years of, of HBO Max, they didn't really know what they were doing. And it wasn't really until really Discovery bought them out. And yeah, David Zaslov might be really strict, but he has a plan. He knows what he's doing. He ran Discovery Plus well. He's the opposite of... In, in Westeros, I wouldn't go so far as to say the Magor to Plepler's Anis, but this really weak, indecisive guy who delegated it to other people and, and, and let them run wild, versus a strict, hard, in-control guy with, as Succession would say, that killer instinct, came in to set things to rights. But that first year was very chaotic, when they just scrambled to get anything on. Point of all of this is I also recently just happened to see an article in New York Magazine's Vulture TV section by Joe Adalian. I love his art, his uh, column, Buffering, where he talks about the streaming industry. This is from February 1st, uh, an article titled Max Casualties, where he was talking about the after-effects of the launch of HBO Max. He's remarking on that David Zaslov just went through a big cancellation wave this past month. And he admits that while he thinks Zaslov is being too strict on a lot of other things, he says, I can't really say this was a bad decision. Joe Adalian explained in Buffering that all of the shows being cancelled at Max the past month by Zaslov are shows that were part of the initial launch wave of HBO Max back in 2020. And many of these shows should never have been greenlit. So it's Zaslov canceling things that really deserve to be canceled, and why did this happen? Well, the actual quote from the article is, <laughs> The executives themselves confused HBO Max and HBO. And it's that whole thing of, who's in charge here? Aren't you? That they really didn't know that Casey Bloys had been promoted up to be the head of HBO after... Um, Plepler left, but he was. We thought Greenblatt was the one really setting the rules for everything as a subunit of Time Warner. What we didn't know was that his right hand, the content creator for HBO Max, was the guy really calling the shots from late 2018 through 2020 when Long Night was being developed. Again, this is, I'm talking about the wider issue though, and just this quote that. Kevin and Bob, but especially Kevin, Kevin Riley, really wanted to do HBO kind of stuff for HBO Max. When the entire point was HBO makes HBO quality stuff at the top of the pyramid, the top tier within HBO Max. And there should also be like two thirds of this should be like a food pyramid, TNT and TBS level shows which are cheaper and not as good, but they're cheaper and easier to make and should have a better cost ratio. You know, like sitcoms and stuff obviously aren't going to be high art, but relative to their cost, they're supposed to be profit generators by having a high two to three times ratio profit margin. And Kevin Riley was explicitly the guy who oversaw TNT and TBS within the Time Warner uh, administrative structure. But as soon as he got to HBO Max, he tried to turn it into this alternate 
doppelganger HBO within Time Warner. That when they turned around, the executives looked at it, they said when HBO launched, oh, now we have these two HBOs and no TNT, TNT, TBS level stuff that we wanted on it. That when you actually look at the stuff they made as HBO Max originals, things that went pure streaming but not on the HBO cable channel. Uh, the, the big example that Buffering uses is that Julia show, that uh, the cooking drama Julia Childs thing. That was supposed to be a major awards vehicle on the scale of Succession or at least The Morning Show. That was supposed to be a prestige-level thing, or hacks. And some of the other things they greenlit, no, this was supposed to be like... The sex lives of college girls they kept because the ratings were decent, but that was supposed to be like the next Big Little Lies. That he made this mere universe HBO within the framework of Time Warner, and they didn't ask for it. Because he wanted to be... And why not just order HBO to make stuff? Technically, you outrank Casey Bloys. HBO is within HBO Max. They answer to you, but in all these codes, they just, from buffering, they just kept trying to make HBO shows. And they, they say it should feel more cable-like, it should be more women content, all these the, the quotes in here. And the whole point was it's supposed to be more than, the tagline was it's HBO and so much more, and then they turned around and just made HBO-like shows. And there wasn't this distinction between them. So whereas, so while Kevin Riley had been in charge of content development December 2018, Greenblatt was, and him were forced out by August of 2020. Now consider that HBO Max launched in May of 2020, so three months after they were out of the gate, they got the boot. Because the higher-ups at AT&T realized, you just made this alternate slate of HBO content. Now, Raised by Wolves was a great experimental show. And I'm happy we got it, that it was this Ridley Scott-adjacent thing. He oversaw some of it in broad strokes. He contributed to it. But fundamentally, this should have been like an HBO cable show or not at all that the entire purpose of the Max Originals is their TBS-like content, not this high-concept sci-fi show that would never have wide stream appeal. Imagine that they turned around and made this show with the budget of, like, a Westworld, and th th that they can't sustain that. So while I mourn the loss of Raised by Wolves, hey, if they hadn't put it on HBO Max Originals, it might have eventually come out on HBO itself, well-funded. We'll never know. So, on top of Plepler left them holding the bag, the guys who replaced him were throwing money at everything. At HBO, at their other projects, treating everything like an Emmy-level show. And this is why we're seeing this cancellation wave now of these things should never have been greenlit. But say what you will of Zaslov, he never greenlit a bomb like this. Or rarely, I mean, obviously, uh, yeah, people point to the idol, but there's always going to be thing, fa random chance and failures here and there, but nothing on this scale, nothing th this absurd of the number of shows they greenlit that shouldn't have been greenlit, that were not supposed to be top-tier things. So it's all one rich tapestry. I know this is just a podcast here. I know I've been going on for 50 minutes, but I just, for those willing to listen... There was utter chaos behind the scenes at HBO when Long Night was being developed. It's like senioritis, you know, when the old administration is just looking to run out the door. Compounded by the people they brought in really didn't know what they were doing either. <laughs>